Welcome to Daz Geek. This is what you've been waiting for, what the community has been begging me for. The review of the UB Ports Ubuntu phone. I am very excited to take a look at this device. I guess it's a review, more of a preview, because this product is still very much in the works. And it's amazing what this team has undergone to create this device here. And I think you're going to be quite impressed, quite impressed with the capabilities this little device has and some of the things that we can do with something that was created by the open source community as well taken over by the open source community initially created by Canonical and they were working on kind of creating that convergence between the desktop and the cell phone but then eventually uh, they abandoned that project and decided to spend their resources elsewhere and the team at UB Ports, that very talented, beautiful group of people, decided to come in and find a way to make this a reality. So you can see, you know, right away the functionality of the phone. You've got your nice kind of navigation or favorites bar over here. Unity-esque bar, I guess you would call it. Uh, with your application, settings, contacts, messages, phone, and then your home screen, gallery, and camera. So you can customize and add things to that. You've got this pull down here with your notifications, rotation lock, all the things you expect on a phone today, but really don't think about very often when you consider the fact that all of these individual things have to be programmed in, and we didn't always have them on a phone. Imagine trying to create an operating system for a phone today with all of the requirements and things that have taken years of us to get. Remember how long it took for Apple to finally get cut and paste abilities? You've got your networks, your sound, of course, so you can control your battery levels here, your time and date and system settings shut down about this device. And we can go in here and get kind of a quick shortcut into our system settings and get information on the actual device itself. So I've been using this little phone here for about a month and have been attempting to see is it ready yet to be a full-time replacement say to my iPhone. I prefer iPhone over Android devices simply because of the privacy and security that they offer and that's a whole nother discussion video if you want to go into that. But I've been in telecom for now 19 years and I feel pretty confident that out of the two duopolies there that Apple is the best of the worst, I guess, in there as far as privacy and security goes. But I'm looking for a better alternative. Of course, I'm comparing stock Android to stock iOS. If you're rooting your device and putting a different operating system on it, that's a different story. Like this case here, we are on the Nexus 5 and we're running the UB Ports Ubuntu Touch here on this device. So no Android, we've got the UB Port. So you can't sideload any Android apps onto this that I know of. I'm sure there's some workaround where maybe you can get access to that store. I don't know. I've not seen anything about that, but just knowing how community hackers are, there's probably a way to dual boot both OS's or something along those lines. But in any case, it's this really this review is to see could you utilize this device in its current form full time. And the answer to that question is yes, sort of. There's going to be compromises currently, but there are things that I think are very fixable and that could get this phone uh, to the point where you certainly could use it as a full-time device and not be missing out on any major functionality, which is pretty cool that they're this close already to delivering something like that. Another thing that's interesting when I show you the app store is some of these apps you'll see were created by very familiar names like Martin Wimpress, creator of Ubuntu Mate, Popey, of course, from Canonical, and other personalities that you've probably seen if you're a part of the open source community at all in there. So just taking a look at the applications that are kind of pre-installed, a couple of these I've added. You've got your phone, your messaging. Phone and messaging work fantastic. I join work conference calls, able to send out text messages. No issue there, works very well. Contacts, of course, uh, you can load any of your contacts into there or import them. You have your camera, which this is one of the areas that lacks functionality. The camera seems to be hit or miss while I can take pictures with the back camera. Flipping it to the front camera sometimes freezes it and doing any video locks it up. 
So there's still issues with getting the camera to function properly on these devices. So that's one of the major issues because most people are utilizing their phones these days full time with the camera capabilities. You've got your Morph browser, which I find to be a very, very capable little browser here for you to go to the web if there's anything you're missing. Um, for instance, like a baking app or something like that that you don't find in the store, you can probably just go to the website itself. And I'm trying to type while standing up and using this phone and filming, so forgive me for it kind of looking funky uh, or me typing weird. Uh, this isn't logged into any account, but you can see you can go to a video and start playing a video right away. No problem at all. Works very, very, very good. So, and then I love the graphics. So if you want to see what screens you have open, you just kind of pull from the right edge there and then you can swipe that away and you can get back to your main applications here. A little game called Asteroids. You've got a calculator, which of course we need. You've got calendar for your events, file manager, gallery for your pictures. Now you're gonna have a hard time taking any video uh, or doing any, uh, what do they call, selfies. That's what the kids call it these days uh, with your phone, but that's there. You've got your media player, music, which you can load on there. Um, your application store, Outlook. So I was able to connect this to my work uh, Microsoft Exchange server without any issues through the 365 so I was able to actually do my work on this phone which was something I didn't expect to be able to do uh, but there's an app for that of course Podbird is here for podcasts and what podcast should you have well you certainly should have the Destination Linux podcast because I'm a part of that you should have the This Week in Linux podcast because Michael who does Destination Linux with me is on that and you should also of course also, of course, have the Ask Noah show there for Noah, who is also on Destination Linux. Uh, those are their separate podcasts there. So you can definitely listen to your podcast from this device. You can connect it to Bluetooth. So I was able to connect it to the Bluetooth stereo in my Honda without an issue and be able to play my podcast through that. So it's got that functionality. Those are some cool things that it's got. You have a terminal, of course. You have UB ports, manual, and documentation. You have UNAV navigation, weather, and YouTube. There are also applications, more web apps, uh, and you're going to see a lot of web apps in there, and we'll get into that in a second. But UNAV is very interesting. I love the idea, especially with all the tracking and things we're ha uh, finding out that Google's been doing. Even if you turn off your GPS on where you're going, where you've been, where your friends are going, all that stuff, having an open source. GPS sounds amazing. The problem is it's not working with my phone at least. Now, I don't know. I didn't see any other people reporting issues with navigation. So it very well could be just the GPS in this used phone I bought doesn't work. But basically, I cannot get this to locate my current location. So I can search for something like, say, McDonald's or whatever nearby, but it doesn't know where my current location is. It'll say searching position, it'll take a while, it'll do this with any GPS applications, including the Google Web app, uh, which will ask you permissions, do you wanna give it GPS information? You can say yes, and it still will just sit there and search and search and search and never find anything. So again, this could be just an issue with my phone, but that's a big deal for me because I can get lost in a McDonald's parking lot. So I have to have that navigation capability I know you could buy a separate GPS and these are things you can work around, but that to me is a little bit of a game killer. But everything else for the most part that I needed was here. And I've even given this phone to my kids and let them, you know, watch some of their YouTube channels that they watch for kids and things and utilize the phone. And of course it's a Nexus 5, so it was a pretty good device, an older device, uh, but they were able to navigate through it without any issue at all and uh, you know the sound and everything works and comes through fine none of those little quirks you may expect from again a group of people volunteers beautiful people who got together to create this for us now you could definitely donate to this project or if you have the ability to uh, help in some of the areas that they need help in such as programming maybe translations or other things check out the UV ports website and see if you can offer some support because I think this project certainly is deserved of that. So here is the App Store. You can see it's very similar to any other App Store you go to. You've got some recommended apps, RSS feeders, some games. Most of the, I don't play games on my phone, but most of the games, because 
it's just it's not to me conducive to really gaming um, but most of these games are pretty simple little you know asteroid like games and and uh, you know choose your own adventure mud like games nothing really fancy you're gonna see here so if you're addicted to say Pokemon Go you're not gonna see those commercial applications on this store as far as categories go here we've got things like accessibility uh, to help with accessibility here you have things like books and comics you have business and finance so AliExpress uh, ING's on here of course, LibrePay PayPal web apps and different things like that Amazon web apps for you uh, to play with there you've got communication and social so things like chatter you've got Facebook I don't know why nobody should be using Facebook you're a fool if you do Google Plus Instagram LinkedIn you know your main kind of social apps in here Proton Mail I was very happy to see a web app for that you've got Skype Telegram which I use a ton of Twitter uh, no Mastodon app though I found that kind of weird maybe oh this is it you Mastonauts so I guess there's an unofficial app for Mastodon there so I take my words back so you can download that uh, of course I had wiped this phone entirely because it had all of my personal information I knew it was gonna be going through this device so I wiped everything I was using off of it if you're wondering why there were no apps that have been installed uh, you got Duolingo and some other web apps so most of these web apps which is kind of I don't want to call it an issue but you know a web app some of that web apps for instance for the Google Maps would pop up and the UI wasn't quite correct you couldn't really log in couldn't see where to log in some of the apps work flawlessly and you really couldn't tell the difference between them and a native app uh, others left a lot to be desired but basically they're just shortcuts to websites to the mobile version of websites it's it's an okay exception this is where I think though this phone you have YouTube ads Vimeo all those Plex uh, server things um, you have different utilities here that you can get into for Bluetooth this is where I think things you've got of course your password managers like LastPass but these this was created by Martin Wimpress by the way um, these are tools that you're used to seeing on your phone and you can utilize but with the web app implementation you know you don't have that uh, certainty that when you get into it you're going to be able to see and utilize all the functionality that may come in a native app um, you know the different settings and, and different views and account information and things that you can get in the native app generally uh, you know in a web app can be difficult to navigate depending on how they built it but all the core functionality of things that you would want in a phone for the most part is there the camera issue and the GPS are the two that hold me back what I've been trying to get to the point is, is where I think this device could shine where I think things could really take a turn or gonna take a turn in the phone market is right now it's almost impossible to compete They're basically the platform with the most apps in this case wins that was the battle that happened that knocked Windows out that knocked Blackberry out and Android and iOS succeeded to be able to capture to catch up with their just unlimited millions of apps that they have uh, combined out there would be almost impossible so web apps is a great way to allow yourself to be able to get to a lot of those sites but keep in mind that phones are now costing a thousand dollars plus people are expecting more out of these phones if they're going to cost a thousand dollars thus comes in things like Samsung DeX. Samsung DeX allows you to run a full desktop Linux on your device. That is very, very cool. That is very functional as somebody who travels. You could just take your phone with you. You get to the hotel, you find a monitor, a TV, you plug it into the dock. You got a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. Boom, you have a fully functional desktop. You're going to an event. You can still code. You can still do all the things you want to do because you have that full desktop experience coming from your phone and for the money that it costs to get one of the Samsung devices again a grand that's also about the cost of a really nice laptop so the expectations are going to increase we also have a situation where you have CPUs that are quad core sitting in these phones you're getting four to eight gigabytes of RAM in your phone you're getting storage 128 gigabytes plus these are holding full capabilities of a laptop uh, in the palm of your hand 
That's a pretty amazing thing. It also means you have the power to run full applications and that's where the power of this device, if they can get it so that it works on more modern hardware. So instead of Nexus 5s and I think there's a free phone that it works on and things that are pretty uh, dated at this point or entry level devices. Uh, one plus one I think is one of the other devices it can run on getting this onto a modern device modern hardware where I could load something like Caden Live, GIMP, um, Blender, any of these applications that would allow me to or any of the you know coding platforms that would allow me to utilize this device and all the applications, thousands and thousands of applications that have been written for open source, I think could make this operating system a game changer for me. Because if I could go on here and show you, for instance, launching GIMP or Kden Live or uh, Blender or Sublime Text or any of these type of applications on here and you could have your full experience of coding like you could on a computer, well, this would make this a whole different experience altogether versus kind of just having a lot of web apps at your hand, at your fingertips. So I don't know if that's where the team is planning to go. I'd love to have them on Destination Linux to learn more about UV ports and what they're doing. I think that without question, you can see the incredible talent that these guys have uh, for designing and building upon what Canonical had started here. It's just absolutely fluent and again I'm kind of reaching down over my camera to mess with this so the interface has been very snappy very responsive from the very beginning very easy to manage and figure out how to navigate through this device it just has really good graphics it feels modern and new it's just on really old hardware so I need my GPS I need the camera functionality to work again GPS could be an issue with just my device so let me know in the comments below if you've used this and don't have that issue because that could be just with this phone that I bought I want to see this one more modern hardware that would be one of my requests and number two I want to see some more actual native applications on here, specifically what we can do with a full desktop experience to really bring that integration in uh, where I can plug this device into a monitor. It has the Bluetooth capabilities to add a keyboard and mouse, it even has external monitor in the system settings as an option. But again, without those powerful applications, there's not much I can do with it in its current state. So I would like to see you know, the ability with more powerful phone that can run those applications natively on this. And then I think they actually have something that could truly compete with the big duopoly out there. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just living in my own fantasy world where people finally care about privacy and security. And you know, it's a utopia because we all move away from the duopoly and get ourselves into a situation where we're not giving away all of our freedoms on the internet. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Overall, I give this phone a fantastic rating. It is definitely a fun side phone to have on you. You can sign up with something like Ting and just have an extra device to play with. Maybe it's a project you can get involved with. I think they're very close to being on something really cool here. Again, my ideas for where they could go with it are just that. They're my ideas. It doesn't make them necessarily the best idea. What do you think they need to do to make this the best experience overall? Uh, let me know again in the comments below. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. It's good to